Pivot tables are extremely useful when we talk about summarizing data. In this example, we have a long list of products with quantity, list price, revenue, all the way up to contract duration. So we have this entire data set. In Excel, there are various ways of summarizing data, but I always prefer to use pivot tables. Not only are they extremely easy, but they are also very powerful. I would even say that if you are dealing with large amounts of data sets, you should spend a lot of time in understanding and practicing how to create pivot tables because they save you tons of time in the long run. So how do we create a pivot table for this data set? It's extremely easy. First of all, you go on the Insert tab and you click the Pivot Table option. You get a pop-up with a few questions. Excel is smart enough to identify a table or a range for you. You just need to check if it's correct. So let's have a look. So Excel has selected the entire table and you can see the entire section is highlighted with a dynamic dotted line. Then you have the option to choose where you want the pivot table to be placed. Do you want it to be placed in a new worksheet or an existing worksheet? So let's say that we want it placed in a new worksheet and then we hit the OK button. Now you can see that there's a new sheet which has been created in our workbook. This is called Sheet 5. We can rename it and call it Pivot Table. Now on the right hand side, you have a Pivot Table Fields section where you can see the list of all the fields that are in the table. And then you have different areas where you can move these fields to. Let's say that we want to see the total amount of inventory that we have on hand. In other words, we want to see the total quantity by product. So I will drag the product name and move it to the rows area. And then I'll move the quantity to the values area. And just like that, the data has been summarized. And you can see that you have 3,315 units of inventory on hand. And you also have the breakdown by product. So in a couple of minutes, you have been able to summarize the data set. After creating this pivot table, you might also notice that there is a separate tab called Pivot Table Analyze, which has been created. If you click here, you see that there are a number of options available. The first option is the name of the pivot table. You can change the name right here. Let's call this Analysis by Product, for example. The active field is sum of quantity. That is indeed what is happening over here. If I click on the field settings option, there are a number of capabilities that I can use. Currently, sum has been selected, but I can change that to count, average, maximum, minimum, and so on. So we do have a number of options. If we go further, I have the option to group a selection and ungroup a selection. So let's say I want to group these two line items. I select them and I press the group selection button and these two are now grouped. Let me undo this. So there is a very interesting option called insert slicer. This option helps you to filter data visually. So let me show you how this works. So if I click on the insert slicer option and if I click on quantity, I can tell that the maximum quantity of a product is 300 units. It starts from one and it goes all the way up to 300 units. So if I want to see which item has 300 units of stock, I just click on this button and it is thermal imaging camera. If I want to know which products have 100 units of stock, I click on this. So there are a couple. We have the super tracker and the back camera. So this is a very useful tool as well. Let me just cancel this. So I'm back to my original pivot table. Let me show you how the refresh data source works. So currently we can see that the super tracker is 1194 units and there are 3,315 units of stock that we currently have. Let me go back to the original data set and change the quantity from one to 100, for example. I go back to the pivot table. I hit the refresh button and you can see that the 
number of units have changed and the super tracker is now 1293 units. Let me go back, change this to one again, hit the refresh button, and now we're back to the original 3315 units. And then you have a host of other options as well. We will be discussing how to create a simple pivot chart in the next module, but you can see that there we have a number of options. So let me also show you how to quickly change the pivot table. So let's say that we want to look at the total revenue by product. So I will simply drag the quantity from the values area and I will just move it outside the pivot table field section. And I can move the revenue to the values area. Now I have the revenue per product. I can also view the revenue and the quantity data together. All I need to do is just move these two items in the values area quantity and revenue and there you go if i want the total contract value i simply add it to my values area and i can keep expanding on the pivot table by just dragging and dropping the fields to the respective areas another very powerful tool is the filters functionality let's say i'm only interested in contracts above 12 months so what I can do is I can move the contract duration to the filters area and over here I click on this drop down hit the select multiple items option and I just select the ones I want so if I'm interested in contract duration above 12 months I'll just select 18 24 and 36 I hit the OK button and the pivot table updates based on what I would like to see in this module, we discussed how to summarize data using pivot tables. We discussed the various pivot table options, and we also had a look at how to slice and dice the data up. Pivot tables are dynamic, and we can use the slicer and the filter option to pinpoint exactly what we are looking for in a data set. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.